Compost tea and compost extract. They're both liquids, but they come with some huge differences. We're going to cover that on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. One of the reasons compost, especially vermicompost, is so beneficial to your soil is due to the biology. One teaspoon of high quality vermicompost has over 1 billion microbes, which literally add nutrient cycling life to your soil. But castings are an expensive soil amendment and farmers are really shocked at the cost, especially if they want to use castings as a top dressing on soil that's growing low value crops like wheat and corn. We just can't make the economics work for these folks. But the most economical way to spread this goodness on your plants and into your soil is by creating a liquid from the compost which strips the microbes off the surface of the material and puts it into a solution which can be spread easily through anything from a watering can to drip lines to sophisticated large-scale irrigation equipment. But there are two categories of this liquid, extract and tea. Now, before I go any further, for the worm farmers out there, I'm not referring to the brown liquid that drips out of the bottom of a worm farm. That mystery juice is called leachate. It's not worm pee, and it's definitely not worm tea. It's excess liquid that typically comes from the breakdown of food waste. Okay, I'm off my soapbox, back to extract and tea. The differences between these two have to do with brewing time, oxygenation, ingredients, and the microbial populations, and the stability of the liquid. Compost tea is an actively aerated brew made by suspending compost or vermicompost in a container of water that's agitated by an air pump and a hose to continually introduce and reintroduce oxygen. During the brew, you can add ingredients like humic acid, which neutralizes chloramine and protects your microbes against toxins. But compost tea brewmasters also add food sources like kelp meal or molasses to the mix to feed the microbes, which are both the current and future microbes that you're trying to cultivate. This constant oxygenation over the course of 24 to 36 hours with the addition of a food source creates an absolute explosion in the micro populations in your tea. Real quick guys, if you're enjoying this video and want me to make more of them, please like this video, hit subscribe, and click that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. Okay, now back to the topic. The process to make compost extract, on the other hand, does not include lengthy oxygenation or the addition of a microbe boosting food source. And you can create extract in as little as 10 to 60 minutes, as opposed to 24 to 36 hours. And the number of microbes in the extract is a lot less than the exponentially larger populations you get with tea. So you're probably thinking it's actively aerated compost tea for the win, right? Not so fast. There are downsides to aerated tea. Firstly, those trillions of microbes are mouths to feed. And once they exhaust the supply of food and oxygen, much of what happens in the first few hours after you brew an actively aerated tea is complete, the population crashes, the brew is going to go anaerobic, and it'll be easier for pathogens like E. coli to thrive. So you have to use the tea almost immediately after you brew. Secondly, it's not all the microbes in your compost that uniformly explode when it comes to tea. It's only going to be the carbohydrate-hungry bacteria that went nuts for whatever food source you just gave them. And it's not gonna be all the bacteria, just the ones that respond positively to whatever food source you've chosen for them. Is that what your plants or soil need? I don't know. And considering how complex soil and the microbiome is, I doubt you do either. And thirdly, if you're using sophisticated irrigation equipment, the foods, especially sugary foods like molasses that a lot of folks use in their aerated teas, can leave a residue inside your equipment that can create a biofilm that uh, sits inside your pipes and can potentially clog your sprayers as well. So if you're in the market to purchase either tea or compost extract, I would definitely stick to extract unless you know you're using a tea that finished brewing in the last few hours. Any commercially available liquid, AKA bugs in a jug, that you would purchase in a bottle would be extract and not tea. Now it's beyond my knowledge right now to be able to tell you how to make a shelf stable extract, one that can last on the shelf for six months, up to two years like some folks claim. But we do have resources on our blog in this video that walk you through how to make an aerated compost tea. The process for making a homemade extract would be similar without the addition of foods and the hours of aeration. You can simply suspend a mesh bag of compost or my favorite, warm castings or vermicompost in a bucket of dechlorinated water, swirl it around for 15 minutes to help pull those microbes off the surface of your vermicompost and you've got something you can reasonably call extract. It's as simple as that. Now look, I don't have a dog in this fight. The soil world has a lot of quasi-religious fanatics that are either for or against compost tea, biochar, biodynamic farming, Korean natural farming, the soil food web, and a lot more than that. And I don't wanna wade into those battles. This video is only meant to show the difference between tea and extract. 
So please go ahead and push forward with whichever one of these makes sense for you, whether it's the ease of making it or the differences you see it making in your garden. Guys, this is mostly a vermicomposting channel and I normally stay within my warm lane and my vermicomposting lane. So if you're a vermicomposter, I've got an insane resource for you to download right now. It's the PDF version of our ultimate guide to vermicomposting where we cover anything from the basics of vermicomposting, how to start and maintain a warm bin, the financial opportunities in vermicomposting and more. Just click this little link above my left shoulder and you can sign up to get that guide immediately. All right, guys, that's it. We're gonna see you on the next video.